he's actually the older brother, and I'm the younger brother. So one of the difficult parts was switching <laughs> the, the role. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah boys, how do you feel about that? Um, it's common sense for the screen. <laughs> Should we stand up? <laughs> <laughs> This story started as a short with these guys and has now turned into a feature. Why did you want to expand on this story and why did you want to tell it in the first place? Um, the story is inspired by, um, you know, so many stories of our friends, family members that came from Latin America to the States, but um, we didn't necessarily associate with the types of Latino stories that came out of Hollywood. With that impetus, we just wanted to see characters that looked like us, but also like had a similar background and education than us. So we did the short film and we didn't think that it was gonna eventually turn into a feature, but when we took it out to the festivals, everybody was just like vibing with the character. So from then on, Macro hopped on and helped us kind of just expand on the origins of the story and also the family crisis and see where we could take the characters to inspire the youth. Guys, I mean, you guys signed on to this when it was just a short film. Why did it touch you so much? I think it was important that it was the first time something got presented to us where me and Mateo could uh, act play together, brothers. first of all. Yeah. And uh, to play brothers just made it even that much more special, you know? I don't think that many of the scenes would have been able to be executed with the person that I had just met or was a little bit acquainted with, you know? There was a, a lot of unnecessary fighting that <laughs> kind of bled into <laughs> real life. Um, but I came think... from a genuine source. Yeah. I mean, Eric being you know, Colombians for real. Yeah. So it resonated when we read the, uh, the short. What was the hardest part about pretending to be brothers? I, I, I think that, uh, you know, it just works for the story. And, um, but I definitely think assuming the role of the younger brother, you know, saying there's automatically going to be some tension and some friction. Mm -hmm. And because it was wanted of us, we kind of like jumped into it and like definitely. just kind of promoted it. Yeah. it. Yeah, we it was promoted, promoted it. Sure. There was definitely some aggressive moments on set. Yeah, I remember them <laughs> just like running lines with each other. And they would just start fighting, and I would be like, yo, Ed, roll the camera, man. Exactly. <laughs> well, bringing this story to life, especially right now in our country where immigration, especially, is, is such an important topic, why was now the right time for this movie to come out? I mean, uh, a lot of our generation has come of age and you know started working and started being one of the biggest consumer demographics in america especially in movies so that definitely reflects with the you know what we want to see and so with that in mind just the right executives aligned at the right time to propel the story forward diane wilmer uh, why was it important for you guys to sign on to this film well i i i think i i mean since i realized a little bit more of my mission um, and, and to try to bring as many stories um, that reflected me <laughs> mm -hmm. and my community. And I, I just thought it was important to change the narrative. Um, I think there's so many different stories to be told and, and, and I am fine telling as many as I can to um, bring across the beauty and, and, and show us as, as a whole people. I just I love these guys. I love their work, and um, it just kind of seemed natural. And it was going to be shot in Colombia, and it was about a Colombian family. And I just I'm very proud of of that part of me, and I, I wanted to explore that some more in my art, um, and so I, I did. It was very tricky to find a project that I could, for the first time, not only play a father, but but really uh, relate on an organic level. And um, so that's difficult, right? So that's difficult, and it's important that that we champion these ideas, but it's important that we don't just take an idea because it's in the conversation, because that just sets us back. It has to be rooted in reality. It has to be organic. It has to feel like it could happen to you. I just said, this is the one. Yeah. And what's great about right now, I feel like in entertainment, and I wonder if you guys feel the same way, is that these stories are becoming more realistic. We're seeing less stereotype because we're allowing more filmmakers and more storytellers to make these stories. Um, Daniel, Wilmer, especially you guys who have seen you know, the trajectory of this industry, what do you, how do you guys um, feel about where we are and where we still need to go? You know, I think uh, 
When you look at the lineup here at Sundance this year, and especially over the past couple of years, you kind of see the direction that the industry and the country is going. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's an interesting time for us because we have uh, a very polarized society, uh, and we have on one side the people who uh, are fighting for uh, an America that was, and uh, on the other side, we are those of us who are sitting here are fighting for an America that can be. Mm. Uh, and so, uh, this movie I think is reflective of uh, an America that uh, I'd like to see, and an America that already exists, but whose stories haven't been told. I mean, we've we've been in this thing for a very long time. Yeah, we have. Um, I was, you know, I was 17 years old when I started in. I'm about to turn 40 next week. Ooh. And what I see, everybody relax. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. We have a cake. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we do have a pain downstairs. We don't have a cake. No, but the, the reason why I'm mentioning that is because uh, we've seen a very interesting evolution, right? We take two steps forward, then we take one back. We take two steps forward, and then we take one back. And, but there is a constant pace in which progression has entered. Ten years ago, this movie would not have been made. One million percent. The, the production company that financed it wouldn't even exist. That's right. Wow. You know, and it probably wouldn't have gotten into Sundance. So, you know, that, that tells you a lot right there. Platforms like Sundance can just change the whole paradigm and it inspires future generations to see people that are, you know, not that often showcased like this in environments like this to just, you know, give those kids, you know, a chance to dream, like I could go there and do that mm. because it's not a common path for at least in the Latino space, you know. When you talk about one step back, that immediately makes me think of our biggest frustration right now. We nearly had another Oscar so white. What as an industry also can we do to move forward? I mean, I think you got to keep making things. You know, it's not a lobby, right? It's not a protest to a studio. It's about saying, like, this is what you have to make, and if you're not going to make it, we will. Mm -hmm. And I think that you see an independent movie, you know, the studios like Marco giving incredible directors a shot at saying, hey, this also can be mainstream. You just, you haven't tasted this food before. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you're going to make a story about us, it can't be without us, Yeah. right? If you're going to tell our story, you got to let us tell our stories. Oh. That's Inspired. like, that's just the most mm -hmm. yeah. authentic way and we're going to present way, it. You want that. Like, this is the other thing. Well, you, you would just, think. No, you would think, but you <laughs> want that. Like, that's the only, If you're trying to appeal to an audience, who do you want to speak to that audience? Well, last question for you guys about this, too. The inclusion of Colombian Spanish in this film and having it be subtitled, why was that so important to this story? Well, when I was growing up in Colombia... <laughs> <laughs> you really did a good job. You nailed, you nailed the so pronunciation. It's a very specific accent. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you get a California native to do a Brooklyn accent, it's going to be false. I think... Um, you know, it's a similar concept. That's the whole point. It's like you, sometimes you see, uh, right? You watch you watch film and you see a Latinx character, and they're you know they're they're saying they're from Mexico, mm -hmm. but they sound like they're from Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. right? Like these are these are all details that matter. Mm -hmm. They matter to us. They matter to our community. They they matter to the story. And so that's why I was yeah. so excited. I don't want to call it. nobody out, but yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so like with a different lens, you can also say like. You know, nothing against Univision or Telemundo, but they tend to portray this like neutral Spanish just because it feels like it relates to a broader spectrum. But mm -hmm. to me, that's the wrong approach. Like there's so many colors and so many layers to every country. And I'm proud of being Colombian and our own swagger and the way that we speak Spanish. It's mm -hmm. amazing. It's very magnetic. And of course, we wanted that for this movie just because it felt real. It's, and my motto is like, the more hyper specific that you can get, the more universal it's going to be because mm. it feels authentic. And Bong Joon Ho just said that we need to all, you know, be better at reading. Subtitles are wonderful and important to One the inch barrier. Yeah. I think he's Colombian too. <laughs> <laughs>